years ago, a young man named Russell for the Gold Press. He was someone who liked to present the Congress of America, creating a website. Russ believes passionately in any question mark that says voluntary and faggot. No victims came forward at trial to say Russ had been in any way. The government wants to take his life. The jury was not allowed to know that corrupt NSA, a super service, and DEA agents had free reign on the site. They stole over a million dollars, and it is still on this website. Three years ago, a young man named Ross Ulbricht was arrested. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole for creating a website. Ross believes passionately in liberty, free markets, and voluntary interaction. No victims came forward at trial to say Ross hurt them in any way. Yet the government wants to take his life. The jury was not allowed to know that corrupt NSA, Secret Service, and DEA agents had free reign on the site. They stole over a million dollars, and it is still undisclosed what else they did. Precedent set with Russ's case will expand government power. It will impact internet freedom and privacy, First and Fourth Amendment protections, and much more. It will impact your future. Who 
longs for a, a more peaceful, beautiful, and just uh, social order. Uh, everything about his life points to this. Yes. And, and, uh, and so in that way, you know, um, he's an inspiration to us all. But I think he had the best intentions, and I think it wasn't done because he's an evil criminal or a drug dealer or any of these things. I think he was a, an idealist, and I think, you know, I heard this earlier, that you, know, you guys pointed out that Catherine Forrest, in her, in her decision, she was the judge in the trial, said that that was the most dangerous part. I think that they really wanted to set a precedent with Ross's case because they specifically felt that his libertarian values were a threat to the, the way that the country is ruled and governed. This is from one of Ross's letters, and he says, however free or unfree you find yourself, it is always possible to become freer and in one way or another, it is the spiritual journey of each person to strive ever more for liberty. That activist part of me is the one who shouted out, Ross is a hero at the end of the trial, and I do think Ross is a hero, namely because he stood in the face of the treatment at the hands of the US government. Obviously, he's accused of doing something as benign as creating a website where we have people who are guilty of violent crimes with actual victims who go with less time than Ross has been sentenced to. We witnessed the judge and the legal system suppress evidence and witnesses to keep Ross from being able to tell his whole story. And we also have the fear, not only what's happening with Ross, but what this is going to mean for the future of the internet and the future of digital privacy itself. And also that the judge specifically was focusing on Ross's um, ideology and his interest in agorism and and libertarianism and, and freedom. And that is a dangerous concept as well. So no matter which angle you're looking at it, the treatment of Ross Ulrich has been horrendous. It's a tragedy, it's a travesty, and it's something that more people should know about. We're in a situation to where uh, individuals being able to barter and trade with other individuals without any distraction is, you know, the gold standard by which we want to live our lives. Ross has as much as he was inspired by so many other people, he's been a big inspiration to a lot of others, including myself. Yeah, this is why he's so dangerous and dangerous to what? To them. There is an attack on the internet in general. And this whole case with Silk Road falls into that. And so they're using the methods of prohibition. It's a, it's a tactic that they use. But we understand that their whole strategy is one of a police state, of a surveillance state, shutting down our due process rights. The biggest issue about this case for me is I just don't feel he was ever given a fair trial. There was just so much information that was not even allowed to be aired. There's enough reasonable doubt in there. You've got at least three corrupt government agents. They knew of two of them during the initial trial, but the judge would not allow that to be brought up as a defense. One of the investigators, uh, Jared Duryegian, testified under oath that they thought that Mark Carpelis from Mount Gox was Fred Tyrant Roberts, and then I think it was two days later, the judge said, disregard everything that man said. Yep. I'm on the jury, I'm thinking, wait a second, there's enough reasonable doubt here. So aside from the fact that I think the drug war is immoral and Ross should be let go just because of that, there's enough reasonable doubt to wind up putting forth a not guilty verdict against Rawls. So I have a personal interest in Ross's case because my case is reversed on prosecutor misconduct. And from what I know of Ross's case and what I've read and what I've heard, that there's been a lot of prosecutor misconduct in his case. We see these dishonest prosecutors withholding evidence, uh, rigging uh, the whole process of the court, and that's the place where the jurors need to say, no, you're not going to do that. So the fact that there's been this obvious miscarriage of justice um, it, regardless of what you think of, the, of what the outcome of the case should be that, you know if you think he's guilty and should, should rot in, in prison in this case does not you know does not bolster your argument for that if you want to have that great have a real case where there's actual all the evidence is presented and we get to hear both sides that didn't happen and then here's ross you know with his his situation of, of these ungodly sent the sentence of life without parole. I mean, 
Well, what's with this? So that the things for which he was officially convicted, like I say, was nothing involving violence, and he got a sentence way larger than they gave Dorian. We're talking about things like uh, the rumors of uh, Ross, uh, Ross paying to have people tried to be killed. Now, if you look at the fact, they used that to get him a his sentence. They used that in sentencing, but he wasn't charged with it. He wasn't charged with it. He wasn't tried for it. The prosecutor is on record saying that he doesn't think that there was any murders that came out of this whatsoever. And and yet, here we go, shutting someone up for life without possibility of parole, and that's very dangerous. His sentence is vastly disproportionate to any harm he's done because he hasn't done any harm. And to me, well, again, as thinking both in terms of morality and as an economist, well, I would say no harm, no foul. Didn't like sitting in a courtroom and watching someone get sentenced to double life sentences without possible parole, one of the most depressing things I've ever witnessed in my life. Uh, you know, there's a person behind all this who's in jail ostensibly for the rest of their life. And that is a tragedy, and, um, and it's wrong, and the sentence is wrong. Um, and there really does, does need to be activity around this, and awareness around this. And on top of that, you know, the government is expanding um, ever greatly their, 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 uh, the powers to, um, to prosecute and to criminalize in all of these different areas. So people are losing their rights day by day by day. They wanted to bag a trophy. Um, you know, certain people within the government made it very clear about Ross from the very beginning that they found this guy in San Francisco. He was the reason for all these horrible things happening on the internet. He was the reason that, the, that there was this terrible and evil thing called the dark net that was filled with terrible people. We had to hang this guy from the highest tree. These are really serious issues, and um, they really do need to be addressed. So I think that Ross, you know, sadly found himself at the intersection of a number of areas that were prosecuted, cybercrime, people don't understand it. Uh, cryptocurrency, financial regulators are terrified of it, but it just happened to the IRS, the Coinbase, um, you know, and the drug war. The drug war, of course, is uh, one of the biggest problems in, in America right and today, where one of the largest incarcerators, a lot of those folks are going to prison because of nonviolent drug offenses. And if you look at Ross's case, we picked it. It's something very similar. Here is a man convicted on no violent offenses, didn't even go to trial for any violent offenses. You need to think about the precedents that are being set here in this case against Ross, and you need to think about how our due process, how our legal system has been corrupted. At the heart of it is this war on drugs. As Google said, when you see uh, every, every problem as a nail, you try to attack it with a hammer, and, and this is not the way we need to attack the issue of drugs. It's an absolute failure. We've got people locked up for lifetimes, and we're having to pay the bill for that. There's so much money being made off of the, the war on drugs in its current condition, you know, from, from private prisons to where you can invest on people being behind bars on Wall Street. How, how ridiculous is that? What a retired federal judge, Nancy Gerber, she, she said, I read something she was saying that we, we have learned from over 40 years in the failed drug, war on drugs that incarcerated did not prevent drug use for sales. And even if it did, there's absolutely no evidence that a life sentence, especially a life sentence by parole, would deter the crime. The question isn't, you know, should drugs be legal or illegal? The question should be like, does each individual human being own their own body? The drug war is wrong, even though it's perfectly legal to lock people up in cases and I want to see it stop, and that's why I got involved in Bitcoin, and that's why I support free wrongs. More so than anything else, I really think that yeah. that's the case uh, amplifies this new frontier of the drug war as it's going digital, and I think that it's very important that we watch closely what's happening now and work hard to make sure that we don't allow uh, precedent to be set in a very dangerous way right there. Here's a young man, like many others, by the way, you know, who are who have been incarcerated in this country where we incarcerate more people than any country around the globe, by far. You know, 5% of the world's population we are in the United States, but we have 25% of the world's prisoners in the land of the free, if I might say. And so here you have Ross, uh, someone who has so much to give to society. 
and we're going to be spending, you know, for 50 years that he's incarcerated. Hopefully, it's not going to get to that. I mean, we're close. $2.5 million, you know, and it's not just the monetary aspect. It's, it's what he can contribute to society on a social level, on a personal level, on a, you know, a community level, if he's no longer behind these bars. And, and, and it's, it's Ross and it's thousands upon thousands of others who are in this situation across this country. Are we advocating for criminal justice reform? Uh, mainly because it's physically, it is physically responsible, but also because of the human cost of, of the criminal justice system. Uh, 2.2 million prisoners nationwide, $80 million a year all across, the, across all levels of government. At the end of the day, the policies are failed, counterproductive to public safety. No longer should we be trying to solve, again, the public health crisis, the criminal justice solutions. It's time to put an end to the madness. And it's everyone's responsibility, you know, to be up in arms about this and, and make a change. And again, we are the number one incarcerator on the globe. And we are supposed to be the beacon of liberty and freedom. How is that? It makes no sense. Hearing all these people talk about how much it affects families, and you know, there's two million kids that have an incarcerated parent, and you know, and Ross isn't even my parent, he's my brother, and this has just really affected our whole family. It's just so sad to see those kids in there, and it's gonna have an effect on their lives, and this has affected us, and I'm an adult. We see the SWAT team raids, and now we see the raids on the internet. And it's not just Ross, it's like Kim.com. They're coming after people who have websites, and they say, well, because somebody did something on your website we think is criminal, now we're going to come after you. We're going to take down your business without any...